We are back. Yes, we are. Are you? I, I need to finish you this can text finish message. Yours. I'm talking about weaning Eloise mm -hmm. with a couple of my girlfriends that are like, I have, I have two girlfriends that I've been very close with since optometry school and they have kids and they both both nurse their kids and so anytime we have any questions basically about parenting in general it's anything a nice, it's a nice little group that you have it's really great i just feel like i'm getting a lot of outside pressure to wean eloise and i'm not ready and just I from the family yeah i don't feel like eloise is ready i'm not ready so i i asked them i said what what do you think would be the latest point like the oldest age that you would consider yourself comfortable nursing Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're talking about now. So, mm -hmm. would you like to introduce the video? We are Brad I'm and Rach. Rach. Our kids are in bed. They're actually in bed. Oftentimes, we'll film like if we're out running around. The kids are running around. We're not running around. We're not going to film and run at the same time. Um, but um, but anyway. <laughs> thank you. Only ten seconds too late. <laughs> but anyway, we have a vlog channel, a family vlog channel, and this is kind of a spin-off. It's funny because this channel started as like a baby product review, and now it's strictly just like parenting and other topics. So like today's topic is going to be, honestly, you'll probably, inter you'll be interested. I hope you're interested, otherwise you shouldn't have clicked on the video. But today's topic is going to be how YouTube has changed us. I'm excited about this video. I feel like we're too far apart. Really? Ah. Does it look like? Ouch. Does it look like we're both wearing white shirt now? Yours is gray. This is my oh, favorite right. shirt. Brad got me this shirt at the bike shop that we got our bike repaired at, and as soon as it comes out of the wash, it's like first on my itinerary. You're welcome. Shirts honey. to wear. I don't know what it is. Okay, so. So yeah, how YouTube has changed us as an individual. Let's let's start very very raw, basic as a person with your values and priorities and goals and aspirations and who you are to the core. Do you feel like YouTube has had an impact on that? No. Me either. Next question. Um, well, that, that really <laughs> basically answers all of the questions. I think, well, so our channel, I guess it's like any family vlog, but we're literally, it's just that we have a camera on our daily lives. But do you feel like we change the way we're acting or change what we are doing because there is now a camera there sometimes? We, we don't. But being on the other side, like us doing our vlogs has made me realize, like when I'm watching other vlogs or other videos, like they're being totally fake. But That's true. But no, we're the exact same people on the vlog. And that's why I think it's so easy for us Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we're just taping our daily lives. Right. So, like, if someone, and we've had this comment randomly throughout the past, how long have we been vlogging? Two and a half years? Mm -hmm. Two and a half years. We've had this condom. Condom. Freudian slip? <laughs> that was a total Freudian slip. What are we doing? What, hey, what are you doing after this video? <laughs> <laughs> we've had this. I'm getting red now. Whoa. We've had this. We're the same. We're the same people on camera as we are off camera. <laughs> We've had this comment multiple times throughout, even just from the beginning, like within the first few months, all the way to now, where people say we're different now than we were when we started, and they wished we were more like how we were, were when we started. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we do have three kids. Yeah, like, we live I in would a different state. Argue that we, we are have different, different people. jobs. <laughs> I hope we're different people. <laughs> It's, it's just funny. Uh, I just I just think it's funny. I think people... Are you the same person you were two and a half years ago? When you were before versus after kids? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Anyway, but, that's, that's one thing that I just... I feel like it's a way I can check in with myself about, like, am I being true to myself? Am I... Like, have my core values changed? Or have they shifted because of YouTube? And I, I no. hope that that answer is no. Yours, haven't, yours definitely haven't shifted because of YouTube but yours have shifted. Exactly. There's nothing that YouTube is pressing on me to change. People should be evolving. Cultures evolve, uh, every species evolves. Like why wouldn't we evolve? Granted, evolution- You're about to touch into like a really controversial topic. Well, I mean, if you wanted to deny science, it's okay. Yeah. But people change. I mean, it's as simple as that. Do you want to talk about clickbait or sponsors first? 
Let's do clickbait. Clickbait. Let's talk about clickbait. We do it. Totally. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's your fault. It works. I heard, I can't remember if it was a YouTube video or on the radio. So they were talking about clickbait culture. People love drama. Oh. That, it, as they plain, love, every time we. It's plain and simple. So, yeah, we have a lot of negative titles to our vlogs because well, for, people love dirty laundry. Exactly. We should say that we have, we have I think, over 600 videos now. Do we really? We have over 600 videos on YouTube. And so we have a lot of... Data. Yeah, data values to go by. And our, well, so our most clicked on videos are like the birth vlogs and then like surprising Navy dad surprised with twins or whatever. But then after that, it's all drama, all negative stuff. Scary, bad, health concerns. Like that's what people click on. We're not gonna, we're not gonna imagine up health concerns so that you'll click on our videos. No. But if we have a health concern, that is gonna be the title of the video because we know from history that that's, okay. And it makes, well, it makes sense because when I'm, so like Ellie and Jared, their videos, I, like when we first started vlogging, I would watch them every day. Well, you know, time and I, like, I just can't keep up with them. So now if I see a title that's like, I don't know, dramatic, I'll click on their video. And watch it and see what's going on. Exactly. So totally. I'm, I mean, I'm guilty just as mm -hmm. everybody else is. Clickbait works. Let me, let me just make an analogy. There are, there are folks that want to see people succeed. They want their friends to do well for themselves and they support them and they don't feel like somebody else's success is a reflection of their own lack of success. Okay? I would, then, I would hope that your inner circle of friends is that. Is that way. Please surround yourself with people that feel that way about you. Then there's people that see other people's success as like they go up one and you go down one because of that. So there's like, there's the people that want, they already know us, they already love us and whatever we title our video, they're gonna watch it no matter what and titling our video something that might broaden our circle is a good thing in their eyes because that means that we are like the the fact that we're making these videos is getting compensated somehow because we are putting effort we are literally taking time to do this out of our own personal time that we could be doing whatever we want we're, making these, we're making these videos we're editing them we're uploading them we're making a thumbnail there's effort put into putting this information and this stuff out there and there's no guarantee of anything coming back. So creating a title and a thumbnail that's catchy helps reimburse us for the time that we're spending putting this out there. And there's the group of people that are all for that. They'll click on the video no matter what. Then there's the people that get really, really angry because <laughs> we tried to make our video as enticing as possible. Right. Rather than put something out there that we don't think anybody would watch, we chose to make a title and a thumbnail that we think more people would click on. <laughs> and we don't make it like so blatantly like clickbaity that it doesn't like even relate to the video. We try not to. Right. But yeah, so I feel like there's two thought processes there and there's one that's helpful and there's one that's harmful and try to be in the helpful category. <laughs> anyway, that's our, that's our clickbait. So monetization, how has that changed you? Or sponsorships? How that okay, monetization zero. There's no, there, there's just not much money to be made. So monetizing when we talk your monetization, that's the ads that run before our videos, during our videos, after our videos via Google. Companies give Google money, and Google runs their ads. That's what's called AdSense, and that's a very small uh, percentage that we get when people watch our videos. And we don't get to choose our ads. Nope. We have it's, no control over that. It's based on your search history mm -hmm. and like what videos you watch. For. Right now, every single ad that is on my Facebook, Instagram, everything is on RVs, RVs because that's yeah. all we've been searching and lately. And the Litter Robot, which, <laughs> click down below, Litter Robot. We do get a small commission um, if we sell one. They're amazing. They are amazing. I, I wouldn't plug it as much as I did if I didn't believe in the product. Litter Robot is I'm gonna robot. I'm gonna take a picture right now of my view. Okay. Iris is right. And we're going to insert it right here. Okay. That's 
what we're looking at. Sponsorships. Sponsorships. Go ahead. Our very, very first sponsorship was a personalized fan, which we still use. I, I want to challenge you on that. That was not our very first sponsorship. What was our very first sponsorship? So this is really interesting that um, recently I watched, or I listened to, I shouldn't say I watched, on my way to work I don't watch YouTube, but I listen to YouTube videos sometimes, especially when it's all dialogue, like the RV videos we've been watching lately are mostly dialogue. Mm -hmm. So I'll listen to a YouTube video on my way to work. Listen to one on my way to work, and the very next video that auto played was my pregnancy update like a week before I delivered the twins. Mm -hmm. So that was arguably at the genesis of our YouTube channel. Yes. We had a sponsor. Who was it? It was a uh, book. A, oh yeah, I forgot about that book. It was like a memory book. Yeah. But that jogged my memory, and I remember having different. We had that but pregnancy. But we didn't, we didn't get paid. They just said they this. didn't get paid. We yeah, were they, exchanging product for mentions in a vlog. Right. Um, but it's not something I would have even known about had it not been for our YouTube channel. We had that memory book. We had diapers sent to us. Mm -hmm. We had um, the bump box, which was like a subscription-based box of yes. pregnancy type. Um, Products. Products that yeah. you could have each month of your pregnancy. Yeah. We had sponsors in the very beginning. So people that say that now we are different because we're shoving products down your throats, which I hope you don't feel that way. Uh, <laughs> we all of a sudden are accepting all these sponsors and mentioning them in videos. We have been doing that from, I mean, as soon as your channel hits a couple thousand subscribers, you start getting emails from people who want to put their item. So to put a number of the emails that we get every day from people, companies that want to sponsor, I would say two. Two emails every single day from well, companies that want to advertise on our channel. It's more now because a lot of them are coming to my personal email because they're going through our agent. Emails that I see, <laughs> two. I yeah, see, two a day. I see two companies that want to throw us money to feature their products in our videos every single day. So how many a month do we do? Maximum four. Yeah. One a week. So if we could, we would do two every single day. Every single vlog would have two integrated ads. And we do about four a month of companies that we can get behind and feel good about. Yeah, exactly. The only companies that we work with are companies that we actually want to work. That's the great thing about like our channel. Our channel's not even big, but it's big enough that we're, well, and we have, I don't want to say real jobs, but, and we have jobs. We're not depending on YouTube for an income. Exactly. So yeah. So it, it allows us to pick and choose what companies we want to work with. And so we do. Things that we genuinely feel that you guys can benefit from, we'd love to share with you. And we do not depend on having sponsors for our videos, but it is lovely. Yeah, but no, it's great. It is. I mean, gosh, some of the companies that to we- To love a company and also get paid by them to talk about them is great. Yeah, definitely. By the way, we have zero sponsors for this channel. So zero. if you want to sponsor us, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I feel like we're being really cheeky and like, I, well, I hope people appreciate it. I hope so too. I hope that's why they tune into this. It show. gets very frustrating when you are, all you're doing is trying to be your genuine self and you're trying to put out good, wholesome content and you're trying to help people in a pandemic where they can't maybe interact with their grandkids and the, these are virtual grandkids, I hope, or virtual kids or whatever, like the dynamic is that brings you to our family vlogging channel. I just hope to continue to provide that. But also, it serves as memories for us. We've said that from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Well, and my parents. My mother literally watches every single video my every, aunt, every day. My aunt, my cousin that both watch us every single day. It's, yeah. Yeah, so we're not going to stop. No, but um, yeah, it gets it's disheartening to see that people think that we're malicious in our intent or just like get really pissed off at us for clickbait when, I don't know, no one's going to watch. Okay, here's what I've learned. If you have some like really exciting, really happy thing going on, like a festival that you're going to with all the kids, and you put like super fun festival, nobody is gonna watch that video. No. No one. And what if it's a really, really cute video and the content is great, you worked really hard on it, it doesn't matter, no one's gonna watch it. So we would wanna pick something within that video that- Like if one of the kids pooped their pants and it ruined the <laughs> festival. Festival ruined by- Poop and 
toddler pants. <laughs> <laughs> then people will click on it. Totally. So yeah, that's, I feel like we've rambled on for 18 minutes about yeah. how YouTube hasn't changed us. But we're gonna title this video, How YouTube Has Changed Us. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know the answer it. And then hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you feel like YouTube has changed us. Yeah. You know, okay, oh, I have one. Oh, okay. YouTube has changed me because it's made me way more comfortable speaking in front of a camera. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Speaking in general. Yeah, that's true. It's improved my public speaking skills. Although, maybe some of you would argue that that's not true. So we were recently on a TV show. Were you nervous? I wasn't very yeah. nervous. Good. No, were you? Not really. No. no. I feel like I would have been way more nervous if we had not been vlogging. Probably the only reason we made it on the show is because we had a history with this. Yeah. So thank you for thank that. Thank you very much. All right. Hit that subscribe button. We love you guys. Hit the uh, like and we'll see you later.